Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's question comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson 10 of the biology 2 module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem on your own before watching my explanation. Perfect. So to really ace this question, we need to understand the different layers of the skin. Now, the very top layer of the skin is known as the epidermis, and the epidermis itself can be broken down into five layers that are slightly different and have different functions. The epidermis sits above the dermis, so all five of these layers are going to be above the dermis. The first one is the stratum basale. That's our base layer, basale base, and that makes sense, right? And what I want you to remember is that cells start here. So there's lots of cell division here, and they move up towards the surface of the skin. And as they move up, they're producing more and more keratin, which is a very important molecule that's produced in our skin. Another important aspect of the stratum basale is these cells right here, melanocytes, they produce melanin, which is essentially what's going to add color to our skin. As we move up, we get to this next layer, which is called the stratum spinosum. The reason it's called the stratum spinosum is because the cells that have moved up here are connected by desmosomes, these little like buttons or connection points. And so when it dries out, the liquid inside dries out, but we've still got, it's like still stuck to these desmosomes. And so we get kind of pointy star looking cells. They look spiny. That's why it's called the stratum spinosum. And here in the stratum spinosum, we have these very important cells called Langerhans cells, which are essentially like, kind of like the white blood cells of the skin in the sense that they fight infection, they can take down invaders. So those cells are very important in providing protection for our body. Then as the cells continue to move up, we get up here to the stratum granulosum. The stratum granulosum, the cells are going to look slightly different as they continue to produce more keratin. And in addition to that, in the stratum granulosum, they're producing a lot of lipidy, fatty, kind of like a, a watertight protective layer of lipids and fats. And then as they continue to move up by the stratum lucidum, this last one here, the cells are essentially dead. They've produced a, a ton of keratin. Now they're just dead. And so they're very clear because the organelles that you'd normally see in a microscope are essentially broken down, wasted away. Lucid, when you say someone's like lucid, they're thinking clearly. So this layer is going to be clear, very easy to see through in a microscope. Finally, our upper layer, stratum corneum. The corneum, that layer, stratum corneum, is going to be just tons of cells thick, like maybe 15 cells. But at that point, they're basically just dead sacks of keratin. So those are the different levels that we have. Now that we understand that, let's go back and try to answer this question. So today's question is a great example of where we're going to have to look through several answer choices that could be possible. And we're going to want to make sure that we're picking the best answer. So if we look at this situation here, a patient comes in and their stratum spinosum, that specific layer, is significantly damaged. We're monitoring them for signs of an infection. The question is, why is infection a concern? Why would, we worry, why would we be worried about infection if the stratum spinosum is damaged? Well, let's look here. First off, released keratinocyte granules will be recognized as pathogens. Okay, so that sounds like a maybe because I know that those cells and those upper layers are going to have a lot of keratin. So that sounds like if I was coming into this question, I don't know a lot about that, but maybe if I look at this, the protective stratum corneum is burned away. Okay, I know that's burned away. Protective adipose tissue in the stratum granulosum is gone. I know there's protective fat tissue there. And I know that that's above the stratum spinosum, so that will be gone too. And so all of these seem like they might be possible. None of them are giving me big red flags, but we're gonna look for a green flag. We're gonna look for the one that's clearly the best option. And so we come up here, it says Langerhans cells in the stratum spinosum may be damaged. That's going to be our magic answer there. That's going to be the top one. Why? First off, we know that the stratum spinosum is damaged. The question made a point of telling us that that's our focus. And second all, while all of these other things maybe could lead to infection, the Langerhans cells we know are specifically designed to fight infection. And so this answer option hits the answer we're looking for right on the nose. Let's check it. Awesome, perfect. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. If you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. Look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time.
Have a good one.